There's nothing worse for a parent than seeing a baby in pain, and there's no guidebook to help them on how to respond. But one father from Warrenton, Georgia, might be able to offer some tips. The proud dad took the internet by storm after a video showing his reaction to his baby crying over vaccination shots went viral. Antoine Lee took his adorable two-month-old son to a pediatrician to get immunization shots. The baby boy, Dibius King, had never been vaccinated before. As a result, Antoine was pretty sure his little fellow would be in a lot of distress after the injections. The appointment was on October 26, 2017, the same day that Antoine learned the heartbreaking news that his father, Anthony Lee, had passed away. He had been close to his dad, who was only 57 at the time of his death. I was very emotional. I was the baby son. I was very close to him. He told people about their relationship. But I don't deal with good or bad days. I deal with peaceful days. I deal with peaceful days so I know my dad is in a peaceful place. Still, while coping with this tragic loss, Antoine continued his fatherly duties and took his child to the appointment, though he was anxious about the baby's potential reaction. The 29-year-old father spoke with people about his nerves. He said, I felt kind of scared a little bit. I knew he was going to go through some pain. I had to figure out a way to comfort him, and the day before, I talked to him and said if he needed to cry, go ahead and cry. That morning when we got there, and I let him know again it was okay to cry. The father and son went to the pediatrician with Antoine's girlfriend, Shamikia Harris. Antoine stayed by Dibia's side as the nurse gave him his shots, and that's when Shamikia started to record the moment on her smartphone. Antoine can be seen comforting the boy in the most wonderful way. He didn't even notice his girlfriend recording, so lost was he in his son's eyes. He was trying to ease his little boy's pain and let him know that it was fine to cry. The video is almost three minutes long, and it's the sweetest thing you'll see today. From start to finish, Antoine proves himself to be a caring and attentive father, repeating the words, it's okay to cry, and I got you. The video shows him sitting on a chair with little Debias in his arms. The nurse then asks Antoine to put the baby on the table to get his shots. As the baby starts to cry after each injection, Antoine raises his voice and says, look at daddy. He goes on to hold Debias' little hands, saying I know, referring to the pain. After the final shot is administered, Antoine picks up Dibius to soothe him and it's here that more paternal magic happens. Within seconds, Dibius stops crying and relaxes into his sweet and caring father's arms. Antoine later recalled the moment. I felt the pain he was going through. At that moment, there was pressure, but at the same time, it was beautiful, he said. Antoine rubs his son's back, jokingly repeating, They did you wrong, man. He then asks Dibius to explain what the nurse did to him, and the baby starts mumbling, as if to reply. Then the brave little man nestles his head into his dad's shoulder and begins to calm down. Dibius is actually one of those rare babies who seldom cry. According to Antoine, the only time he usually breaks into tears is if he's hungry. So the fact that these injections made him sob shows how much pain and shock he would have been in. Antoine spoke with ABC News and told them how difficult the whole situation actually was. He said, I felt his pain, but at the same time it was all about love. I know he felt the love because his daddy was there. Later that day, Antoine posted the video to his Facebook page. He captioned it, I felt his pain, wait till the end. Not surprisingly, the video of his pep talk has since blown up and gone viral. It's had an incredible 16 million views and has been shared more than 200,000 times. The footage touched so many people that nearly 40,000 comments have been left with most praising Antoine as an amazing father. Michelle Obi wrote, so sweet and adorable. Don't cry, little man, while Mary Lambert added, love it. Good job, daddy, calming him right now. That night, after the news of his father's passing and his boy's first vaccination shots, he spoke to Dibias about his hopes for their future. I talked to him like a grown up. I let him know there will be a day I'm going to have to die. I'm going to have to leave this world, he said. Antoine told his son that he wants to see him succeed before he dies. He said that that was all he really wanted. He also hopes that the viral video works to highlight the significance of fatherhood and to showcase what a wonderful thing it can be. He said, I want fathers who watch the video to take care of their kids, because when you sign up for something, you have to stick with it. You gotta go. My son is here, I'm signed up for it, and I have a beautiful mom for my child, and I'm going to be with him to the day I die. With Antoine's natural flair for parenthood, it's hard to believe that Dibius is in fact his firstborn. 
But if the parish trip to the pediatrician is anything to go by, it's clear that father and son are going to enjoy a great and lasting bond in life. This story was really incredible, but you will like the next one more. When this two-year-old had a very public meltdown, her dad's reaction caused a stir online. Every parent has felt the stress that comes when their children have tantrums, and that feeling is only amplified when the meltdown happens in public. Clint Edwards' two-year-old daughter had one of her own, and his reaction started people talking. Edwards had plenty of experience sharing and examining his own choices as a parent. Indeed, he has authored a parenting book called This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things. He also runs a blog on parenting, No Idea What I'm Doing. For the Oregon-based family man, writing reflectively about his parenting adventures was a way to deal with his upbringing. His own father had left when his son was just nine years old and spent much of Edwards' childhood in prison. He subsequently passed away due to drug use while Edwards was still in his teens. On his blog, Edwards wrote, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing because I didn't have a father in my life. I still don't have someone to turn to when it comes to fatherly questions, so I'm making this up as I go. That's what you will find here, me honestly trying to figure it out. And with two daughters, Nora and Aspen, son Tristan and wife Mel, Edwards certainly has a lot of stories to share regarding his parenting trials and tribulations. On March 5, 2017, he penned a Facebook post about his youngest daughter that started people talking on social media. The entire Edwards clan had gone out to dinner at Red Robin that evening, but their trip to the burger restaurant wouldn't quite go as planned for the father of three. I'm stuck in the van with my toddler, his Facebook post began. Edwards proceeded to explain why. We went out to dinner as a family and Aspen had a meltdown because mom wouldn't let her throw chicken strips. So she screamed and screamed and kicked and kicked, he wrote. Because Edwards had already finished his dinner, he had the pleasure of dragging her out of Red Robin. So he scooped up his tantrum-throwing youngest child and carried her through the restaurant. And that was when he noticed the rest of the customers' reactions in the restaurant. Edwards recalled, everyone stared at me, most of them childless, I assume. No one with children would give me that straight-faced, lit-twisted look that seems to say, if you can't control your kid, then don't go out. As Edwards sat in his vehicle with his crying daughter, he reflected on those reactions and realized something. In a sense, the judgmental restaurant patrons were right. No, I can't control her. Not all the time. Not yet, he wrote. And yet, Edwards wasn't ready to give in to the apparent implications of their reactions, namely that he shouldn't take Aspen anywhere she couldn't behave. She's two, and it's going to take years to teach her how to act appropriately in public, he wrote. He went on, writing, the only way I am ever going to teach that is to take her out and show her what's right and wrong, by saying no a million times, letting her throw a fit, and telling her no again. But this was all part of parenting, he believed. These lessons take patience, hard work, and real-world experiences, and I'm sorry to those at the bar who got irritated by my child's fit. But you are part of this practice, he wrote. Your parents did the same with you. For them, he had a dose of reality. Your parents did the same with you, and that's how you now know how to recognize when a child does something irritating in a restaurant. It's how you learn to look at a situation and say, that parent needs to control their kids. It's how you learn to be a respectable person. I get it, he went on. Kids are irritating when they are loud in a restaurant. I know, I'm living it. But before you get angry and judgmental, realize that what you are witnessing is not bad parenting, but rather parents working hard to fix the situation. He left readers with one final thought. You are looking at what it takes to turn a child into a person, he concluded. With that, he shared his story with the internet community, and it struck a chord with parents across Facebook. Many shared stories in which their children had caused similar scenes. Others said they'd learned the same lesson when they became parents. Facebook user Lazzarotti wrote, Turning children into functional people is hard, constant work. I used to judge. I don't now. The majority of the comments read like this, providing support for Edward's experiences and the message that he wanted to convey. In fact, about 32,000 people commended on the post, while more than 213,000 shared it to their own pages, further stoking the conversation. And although his post certainly connected with parents, and perhaps taught a lesson to those without kids, it wasn't the end of the story. A year later, Edward shared an update on Aspen's progress. The duo were back in the van, this time, though, Edwards wrote that his message wasn't for wrongfully judgmental people. It was for the parents in the thick of it. I want you to know that it's one year later, and I'm here again, still at it, a child screaming in the backseat. She's much better behaved, 
but obviously still a little stinker. And I will keep at it because that's what parents do, he wrote. <laughs>